bit of an opposition reflex. Um, it can happen in a ton of ways, right? One, I'm tall. So like it's, the dog, I can stand up and there's back pressure on it, right? Secondly, opposition happens if I'm pushing against him too, right? So if I'm leaning in, see I'm leaning into him and he's like, fuck you, pushing me, pushing me away from him. So I'm, when I'm first kind of working a dog that I haven't worked before, I let him kind of, a dog like him especially, I let him kind of get some steam off so we can have him thinking a little bit. Mm. If I just go, it's hectic and wild right from the start, especially with a more driven dog. A lot of times they're not learning, but they're just going through the motions, right? They're just there, and we've seen some dogs when they get kind of spun up doing detection work, how it can be detrimental. It's the same as it might work. So let him get it out of the system. And then when he's able to process information, when you start putting pressure on him, it means a little bit more. A lot of times we think of pressure as like hectic things, smashing the dog in walls and garbage cans, but little things like this. So watch his face. Can you guys see his face? Like me just maintaining eye contact with him. You get a little bit more piss, I'm countering. Then negative reinforcement, I maintain that eye contact. When he counters, that eye contact goes away. He's doing pretty good with that. I can now progressively make it a little bit more complicated. I'm going to do a little bit of a growl this time. Low growl. Let him turn it off, right? Here. Oh, man. Pretty good there. Now we can take steps and push it a little further. We don't just go balls to the wall right away, right? If I notice in this stage it was a little too much for him, we would stay here and work that a little bit more. <laughs> Notice my reinforcers become a little bit more as I ask more of them. Ah! Ah! Oh, good man. Also, as a decoy, I'm not always his enemy, right? It's a sparring partner. We're trying to teach each other skills and help each other. So I have to meet him with a little bit of conflict, but I also let him know that he's doing things right. Ah! Ah! Oh! Ah! Ah! Oh! Ow! 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 See those counters now? Back to back? He's like, oh, I fuck, I got you. Ow! 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 And I try and get up. If he counters while I'm trying to get up, he gets to keep that real estate and push me back down, right? If, if he doesn't, I get up. It's teaching the small skills of fighting, not just balls to the wall. Again, I could be doing a bunch of hectic stuff right now. He doesn't have time to process that information. Ow! No! Ow! 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 You see his body language so far, like that pushing into me? Ow! So we find threshold, right? He stopped his common behavior, his tail's still good. But he paused, his behavior changed a little bit. We hang out here until he figures out the answer to stop me from holding you here is to punch in. We have to, these are those moments of struggle that we have to find and let him struggle here and figure out what the answer is. Ow! Ow! And when he struggles and counters on me, I let him beat me up a little bit more, right? Like, oh, look, that was it. Ow! See how much faster it was that time? He said, okay, you're doing pretty good. And I'm gonna not just hold you, I'm gonna grab your flank. The tactile drills we talked about with the little puppies, same progression. Now I'm holding you here, not lifting you in the air by your flank, but I'm holding here. <laughs> 
Now make a choice. You pause. You're not gonna push further. Ow! 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 Oh, good man. Boy. Ow. Ow. You notice as well, my hand is on his collar, right? If he was to let go, I have a pretty good grip on him. Um, for him, hopefully not to reach my money maker. <laughs> wants to spin quite a bit, so I can change my environment to make that not, pretty, not conducive to it. Ow! Ow! Now if he tries to spin, where's he going? Oh. You can try to come out this way, I'm here. pretty driven, is I don't give them short bites, right? I'm trying to satiate some of the drive. If he only gets to come in, bite for 10 seconds, and then go out, we're kind of negatively punishing, right? And he's like, oh, fuck, I want more. He doesn't need that. Some dogs need to want more. We need him to be like, oh, got that, got that out of my system. Oh, man. A lot of times, a lot of hectic bite work with dogs like this also increase that. When you say hectic, I'm, I don't want to show you yeah, anything, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but like very active decoys. Okay. Rah, rah, rah. Like, a lot of motion, a lot of Yeah, running. whips cracking, a lot of stuff. Before we got good decoys, people like, it would just be a cop that would put a suit on the dog to bite and they would scream the whole time. So they get rewarded for thrashing, pulling, pushing, whatever. And, and then we mess, we mess up our clear communication, right? right? Like if, if I'm saying, ow, 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 the whole time he's biting me, <laughs> then when he does what I want and I say, ow, right. versus nothing's happening, we need to create a proactive dog, not a reactive dog. Proactive dog, reactive decoy. If he doesn't do shit, I'm not doing shit. I hang out here all day. When he counters, that turns the game back on. That's not what I want him to do. He doesn't get paid for it. That's not it. Ow! The game comes back on. Ow! Ow! When you were decoying with him yesterday, like he was ah, dead weighting you quite a bit because he was capable of doing it, right? If we can set our environment, you know, that low base, keeping him up here, easier said than done with the heavier dogs, right? But we don't make it conducive. It doesn't pay. He's, he's gonna try it because he's a shepherd. <laughs> if it doesn't pay and he doesn't get the results he wants, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta do something else. He's trying it, but just don't let him do it. Ow! And those, those reinforcers don't need to be super tactile and physical communication is way more important than him, right? So me not making any sound but flinching when he counters in is probably way more than me just saying, ow! When you go into the ground, he's like, oh, I got you now, right? Ow. Making sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions? Also, as, the, as the, we talked a little bit about that back pressure, right? As the decoy, I can use my hand here for back pressure. I can get a hold of here for back pressure. I can get a hold of his head for back pressure. Pull him off of me. All these other, a lot of times as decoys, we take our hands and start pushing him into the grip, right? A lot of what we do with opposition reflex is like pulling a dog into odor. What do they usually do if we're trying to force their head in somewhere? They want to back out away from it, right? So I do the opposite. Get, get off me. Get off me. If a coyote catches a rabbit, the rabbit's like kicking at its face, trying to get loose from what it has, right? Ow! But this is what I'm saying with learning theories, operant conditioning, even some classical conditioning, um, dog behavior is dog behavior. All right, we say, okay, this is gonna happen until you counter. Oh! You counter and stop this. Ow! 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 Man. Ow! Much faster counter that time, right? Dog's learning a ton, 
in just a short session. On his tail. Ow! Pretty quick counter. Ow! Did, does anyone do like um any like martial arts, jujitsu, kickboxing, anything? Okay. It's really one of the pictures that's important to, to show these dogs is what it's like fighting when you're tired as well, right? Mm -hmm. It's much easier to fight or be in combat uh, when you're, you're fresh. It's different when you're in the fifth round and you're exhausted, but the guy across the ring looks like he hasn't even started yet. So also exposing him to that, satiating these drives for this young, super uh, driven and, and nice puppy that I'm going to take home um, <laughs> is important. So now I'm here, not fully lifting him off the ground, but he has to make a choice. Oh! Oh! As decoys, if we don't have a wall near us, we can do things with our body, right? I can block him from going that way if he wants to go that way with my leg. Ow! Good man.